Hi, Linton here, this is Sketch and Tell. The picture that I have uh, drawn and nearly finished kind of sums up the way that I think many of us might be feeling during uh, this period of what we call lockdown, isolation. It's like going for a walk early in the morning and it's very misty and as we walk along what we uh, thought was familiar terrain, we're looking ahead and everything looks different. It's blurred, it's misted over, it's changing, there's not a lot of detail there. And for us I think that is the way that we're perhaps feeling as we look ahead and wonder after this is over and we're back to school, back to work, back to kind of normal routines, is it really going to be the same? Is it going to be the same landscape? It's very hard to read the details, to see through the mist of uncertainty. But these times and these moments are not new. They, in fact, will be ones that we will come up against over and over again, especially when we're facing a very major decision in our lives. What school do we want to go to after we finish Year 12? What course would we like to take on? What job? What career? Who do we spend our life with and share our life with? Uh, and how do we deal with unexpected uh, challenges. There's always the unknown. I'd like to share one moment in my life. I'm going back a bit now to when I was a little bit younger and it was when I was thinking about stepping out literally onto the road and taking art and storytelling to, around Australia as a way to, I guess, help people think a little bit more deeply about life. And it was uh, like looking into a misty distant. I couldn't quite figure out, is this a good thing? Is this a, is this a risk too big to take? Especially when I was thinking about my wife and family. Are we going to crash and burn? Are we going to be able to pay the bills? Will people be interested? And I decided to take an intentional moment of going to my study, closing the door and doing some readings and reflecting, some prayer and looking for some guidance and clarity. But it just wasn't coming wasn't happening. My, heads were, my head was thought, filled with all sorts of anxious thoughts and possible negative outcomes. And to make matters worse, I had a, a distraction in the size of a little dog who I normally went walking with at this time in the morning. But this little dog was in the study with me and was kind of wondering what's going on and was starting to, to whine and to give me a bit of a, a tap on the, you know, with its paws and then it would bring in a cloth and uh, hold it in its mouth and say, well, if we can't walk, let's play. And I was getting a little bit annoyed and so I told it to keep quiet, but it wouldn't. And so I picked up the little dog and I was just about to take that dog outside and close the door on it when I had a very profound thought. Now, it's not new to maybe a lot of you, but it was new for me because it was the timing of it. And as I held my little dog, I thought to myself, how do you spell dog? And what do you get when you spell dog backwards? Now, before you think, the profound thought I had that morning was, oh, my goodness, God is a big dog in heaven, or my little uh, dog here is in fact God. I wasn't thinking that at all. You see, I'm somebody who has always looked around at nature and have deeply felt as a person of uh, faith, that every part of it, from the distant stars to the grains of sand on the beach, reveals something of God's presence and uh, mystery and creativity and wonder and beauty, but also something of God's character and nature. But as I looked at my little dog, I thought, I'll talk about trees, I'll talk about uh, mountains, I'll talk about water and oceans, but I've never considered dogs. And so that morning as I sat down, I started to think about some of the different dogs that uh, we might have at home, and to think about some of the special, unique qualities about them. And I could write a book, but I'm going to share six dogs that I thought about. In fact, this is the first of a series of six presentations that I'm going to make, where I'm just going to uh, reveal one of the uh, dogs that I was thinking about that morning and uh, just wrap around that uh, picture some of the thoughts I had. And the first dog that I thought about 
is that lovable, adorable, affectionate, intelligent dog that we would call a Labrador, a Golden Retriever. Now they do come in different uh, colours, different flavours, they come in chocolate, brown, uh, golden, uh, tan, uh, sandy colour and of course black, licorice black. But as I was thinking about the Labrador, I was thinking about not just the fact that they are intelligent and affectionate, energetic, they do love to drag washing and clothes out into the guard, they love to dig holes, but the special bond that they form with not just any owner, but someone who is visually impaired, someone who cannot see properly, they find that a Labrador as their guide can just change their lives. And I was thinking back to a, a story that I had just finished of a young girl, she was a young adult when she wrote the book, but she was reflecting back to her time in upper high school when she discovered that her poor uh, eyesight was in fact the, a degenerative eye disease that was causing her to, to go blind and there was no reversing it. And she describes that when she left high school and she was with her parents living at home, it was a really scary moment and a time in her life because she had uh, lost her ability to be independent. She could certainly find a way around the house and find things there, but she for a long time didn't go outside because it was too scary and she was afraid of getting uh, hurt or being laughed at. And then until she was linked up with one of these dogs, it took a little while, but she said that relationship when this dog entered her life, she realized it was a very unique, special relationship built on trust. The dog could not only do things around the house, um, she led it to open you know, doors and find lost phones and uh, open the fridge, but it was when they went outside that the magic happened. She describes that it was a step-by-step, -step growing, learning relationship of trust. You put on the special harness and she said as she stepped out, she had to really trust totally that this dog was for her and with her and able to guide her. Without walking her into a lamppost, without taking her to an unknown place and then running off because of distractions. But as she let this dog guide her, day by day, day the dog was able to take her further down the road. It was a busy uh, inner city suburb, down streets that were filled with people. She could trust the dog to stop at uh, certain intersections and not walk her in front of a bus. The dog could take it to shopping centres and not be distracted. And she said as this continued, her world became bigger and more expansive and richer. And as I thought about that relationship between that, that girl, that woman and the, and the dog, I thought that's exactly what I need to think about in my relationship with God. It's not about asking for the future to be opened up. That's not going to happen. It's not about reading special insights into what's going to happen. None of us will know that. But rather it's learning step by step, day by day, to trust the one who is with us in our lives like you trust a Labrador guide dog. That God is not going to leave us not, and abandon us. God is not going to endanger us. But God is going to open up our horizons and open up our world in a way that we could not imagine ourselves. In fact, the relationship that I thought about is also one that is written about in Psalm 23, although it's a very different combination between the sheep and their shepherd. It's the same thing, and I'd like to finish with reading uh, that. The Lord is my shepherd, or my Labrador. I shall not uh, be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul and he guides me in paths of rightness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of mist or the valley of darkness or the valley of scary things, and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And your rod and your staff, they comfort me and protect me. In closing, I'd like to wish that you may know that God is with you in all that you do. And God is like one of these amazing Labradors. And that you might have the courage of faith and trust 
in this misty and uncertain time that we find ourselves in.